Hey, knock, knock. <laughs> Who's there? Who's there? Amish. Amish who? Amish who? Funny, it don't look like a shoe. Mm. <laughs> 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 Hey, what's happening, guys? Slow week, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's a good thing. Cats away. Cats away. Yeah. <laughs> when we're busy, when we're busy attacking, it's hard to sometimes poke your head up and then see what's going on. So. Right. Um, but there's been some interesting things this week. Should we start with Last Pass because that's uh, oh. you know we're already done with Last Pass, but mm. not everybody is. Oh my god. Yeah. But I'm glad we oh. finally jumped ship. Yeah, me too. <laughs> We hope we held on hope as long as we could, but well, I mean, actually, let's talk about that phenomenon for a second. So, when when you adopt the technology, it's typically because you you know went through the choices and you or you got recommendations and things like that. Uh-huh. But you have to question it, and it, it's easy to say, "Oh, this is just a bump in the road." And a lot of times, that's the case. Everything has, you know trauma and, and problems to deal with your the car you buy might have a recall or you know the, the 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 kitchen you want doesn't you know doesn't have every feature you want there's always a little bit but when you start when some when a company tells you who they are believe them and last yeah. pass has told us they don't care about security nearly as much as they should for what they're doing well and what i find awesome about this is a story in awesome. ZDNet. It's- Always bad news. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the story, it's titled, LastPass Breach, Hackers Put Malware on Engineers' Home Computer to Steal Their Password. So huh. in this particular case, what happened is, and, and it's funny because we talk about this all the time, right? We give lectures right. on offensive security to small to medium businesses, large mm-hmm. organizations, Fortune 500s, military, et cetera. And what we say is, listen, um, you know, for me to breach... Um, someone like uh, Ford Motor Corporation or Microsoft or whatnot. I'm not going to break into that that company. They they spend right. tens of millions of dollars on cybersecurity. What I'm going to do is find the engineer, we'll follow him home, and then break into his home Wi-Fi because right. nobody's protecting his home Wi-Fi except yeah. for potentially him. And that's what happened here: is a senior DevOps engineer who, for some reason, required authentication to decryption keys. Hmm. To decrypt all of the cloud services, which awesome. Um, his home computer got infected, and then they were able to break into the organization that way. So it's it's definitely huh. it's something we've been preaching for probably I don't know two three years now. Is least privilege, yeah. yeah. Least not only least privilege, but but also you re- the when employees go home, <laughs> especially with COVID happen, you know everybody has access to. Logging into the the office remotely and that sort of stuff. When some when yep. now this is part of the attack surface is your house, right? And and I can get on those networks. So this this came down to social engineering, then, didn't it? Yeah, it, interestingly enough, um, I think we a lot of our stories today. I think we'll talk about social engineering, but still a, a uh-huh. great attack vector. Unfortunately, yeah. What's that TV show that uh, people have a different memory? When they're at work, than when they're oh, oh uh, yeah. severance, yeah, severance, severance. Yeah. We need severance. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> Compartmentalize, That's right. melting work people's brains. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work for me because I'm self-employed and I work in an office in my home. So we'll or just does constantly it, wipe your memory. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. What, uh, yeah, that's true. Maybe I maybe don't. there is a Carl outside of where you are. <laughs> Wait a minute, who are you guys? Um, no, but I, I, you know, I did take the step of uh, removing the regular Wi-Fi password from the wall, changing it, and then everybody who comes in as a, you know, do you have Wi-Fi? I give them the guest network. Absolutely. And only only my wife's and my office computers and printers are on the regular Wi-Fi. Everyone needs three Wi-Fis. They need the one they use, they need the one they put their IoT stuff on, and they need the one they give to guests. Mm-hmm. Never the twins yep. shall meet. Yeah, I don't have an IoT network. I don't. I don't have IoT devices really. Good for you. Wow. You don't have any? No. No streaming TVs. Okay, we'll send you one. Streaming TVs <laughs> are IoT devices. Yes. <gasps> if it has We've an IP address, organization over a TV. IoT. Yeah. <laughs> so that one should 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 go on the guest network or no? Either the at at minimum the guest, but if you can have yeah. an, a separate IoT network, it's better. Uh, yeah. Let them fight it out. Interesting. Yeah. I always learn something yeah. when I listen to you guys. 
<laughs> yeah, one of the companies we broke into, we were able to put uh, break into the TV and put software on the TV that would then come out to us every day and tell us what the Wi-Fi password was. You tricky guys. Can they really spy on you through your TV? Um, um, I, like that, There was a thing like, uh, I don't know, it's a couple a camera. years ago. Yeah. No, well, so, a, a couple of years ago, there was a, a thing that said smart TVs can actually yep. listen in to you oh, and... Yep. A hundred, hundred percent. So when we broke into that, when we broke into that TV oh. to break into that, um, that customer's site, um, I had access to all the APIs, uh, the microphone to listen to when people say like, you know, press the mic button and say, Hey, I'm looking for a show that is, you know, a, a Western, whatever. I could turn that mic on. Oh, okay. Um, there were APIs for the, the camera. Um, although this particular TV didn't have a camera, but I could have called up the camera. Um, obviously I could see what was being watched and all that other good stuff. So yeah. But if the TV is off, and the only time you use it is you turn it hey, on Carl. and you use a remote. <laughs> most of them, most of them don't really shut off. Yeah, when you push the what? off button on your TV, it doesn't shut off. Carl it just goes to sleep. Oh yeah. my god! All right, <laughs> I have the title. I have the title for this show. Don't watch TV so you know, ever. So you know those, you know those little things that you put over your 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 lap laptop camera so you can close yeah. the yeah. window. Camera covers. We're gonna have those for TVs. Yeah, eighty five inch TV. So just throw a sheet your, over it. Take your TV at home, Carl. And can if you, you put hold, earplugs on it, I know, right? <laughs> no. Hold the power button down on your TV button remote yeah. for 10 seconds and you'll notice a different window pop up saying, oh, do you really want to shut the TV off? And then you click wow. OK. Now yeah. you can just unplug it, of course. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. All right. There's no battery that's... <laughs> Carl. Oh, only for 36 hours, Carl. Oh my God, you guys are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Only for thirty six hours. You yeah, know, the battery. Yeah, that's just it. kidding. Just kidding. No. <laughs> okay. I'm Separate gonna, network. I'm going to unplug it first of all, all the time. Uh, we don't allow everything. Everything. We unplug I, when it all. we talk, when we talk business and customers, we don't. We make sure that we're in rooms that don't have any IoT. Yep. Wow. Cameras, you know, the uh, the, the devices from Google and, oh. and, and others. I won't say their names so they don't turn on while people are listening. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that that's good to know because I think yes. we are going to be investing in some, you know, uh, locks and cameras and Nest mm -hmm. interfaces and things like that. Are those Nest thermostats safe? Well. Uh, Carl, I'm going to tell you nothing's safe. So here's the problem. <laughs> I, I mean, from... Nothing safe from you, Dwayne, but uh <laughs> here's the problem. So in order to do the TV, we had to buy a couple of those TVs and gut them and and figure it out. It wasn't trivial and reverse like reverse engineer them. Yeah. And pull the firmware and we, off the TVs. And we discovered vulnerabilities <laughs> that weren't actually out there. If a vulnerability is known, then the TV gets patched and you do it. So what Dwayne's talking about is reversing, where we actually look at the operating system and we find vulnerabilities. That's a lot of work. It's hard. It's high skill labor. Um, so I don't know, but I think every device in the world has a vulnerability. It's just a matter of whether it's available yeah. or not. Speaking of Carl, when's the last time you patched your TV? I or have never thermostat. patched my TV. I don't use the thermostat yet, but I've never patched my TV. I didn't even right? know it was possible. TV should patch themselves. They don't. They don't. You Ugh. have to go to the about on the TV, find the software version, and then you well, can yeah, click right. update. So here's the thing. I haven't really used those TVs in a long, long time. I mean, I mm -hmm. have cable, but I don't have a cable box. And I can just pull up any channel on my computer, and that's how I watch. But yeah. I mean, if yeah. you didn't join the TV to the network, then it's not an issue. Yeah, of course. But then it doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> Right. <laughs> unless Certainly you can't a, get updates. Unless you smart have a DVD player, so you know? All right, enough of this. What's the next story? Chick-fil-A? Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. This, this one's super sad if you love Chick-fil-A. So, <laughs> uh, Chick-fil-A has released that they uh, were breached and uh, customers, customers saved, uh, saved uh, like money, credits. Right. Uh, what do they call it? Their rewards program. Okay. Rewards balance was potentially stolen. Huh. And uh, now hackers are, are eating um, chicken nuggets and, and fries, those delicious waffle fries. Well, first of all, I'm not a fan of the company for their policies towards people. Mm. I am and, not either. And uh, number two, I'm freaking diabetic. I can't eat that crap. <laughs> and <laughs> those it is fries crap. are awesome. Those uh, fries come are on. Awesome. You can get good fries anywhere. 
Although anything soaked in grease is probably fantastic. You know who has mm. great fries and some people don't like them is, uh, I, yeah, welcome to the f- fast food show, kids. Right. Um, is uh, uh, Five Guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Those are good. Aren't they good? And and you can get like a keto style sandwich at Five That's Guys. That's true. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I can't eat the fries burger. anymore anyway. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But when I could, those were my go-to fries, cooked in yep. peanut oil and just delicious. Oh, so good. All right. So, so tell me so you're more about chick fil um, yeah, So what's yeah. interesting here is that- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Listen, here, I think this t- this article should have been titled, Hackers Saving You from Terrible Food. That's what, that's that's what great. it is. That's great. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a credential stuffing attack. And all that is, is- If you're using a username and password on a different site and it was breached and that gets leaked out to the dark web and then dark web people take it and sell it to hackers and the Mm -hmm. hackers try and use that username and password everywhere they possibly can. And in this particular case, they used it in in Chick-fil-A and and found access to whole bunches of users accounts. Um, What's interesting here is this type of attack. Um. And well, and the personal information that they could pull once they logged in was the user's name, email address, uh, their membership number, of course, their mm-hmm. mobile pay number, uh, masked credit card slash debit card, um, and then how many credit balances they have. Um, so the interesting thing about this is this attack is not fast. This takes mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. and it takes thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of requests to the website. Oh, wow. So I'm, so what it, what it kind of reveals is, you know, A, you know, Mr. User, don't use the same password in multiple places, but B, a company like Chick fil A should have noticed this. They should have been watching, right? Um, thousands, yeah. tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of invalid login attempts. Um, and then gone, hmm, this seems weird. Maybe we should not allow that to happen. And they didn't. So this highlights the difference between an offline attack and an online attack. An offline attack is when I get some information that I can take to my secret layer and I can attack without connecting to the system I'm trying to get into. So, for example, when I pick up a Wi-Fi uh, encrypted, you know, handshake off, off the air, I can go crack that to my at my leisure offline. You don't get to see my attempts. But when I'm trying to break into your Wi-Fi router by guessing passwords, or in this case, get you know, doing password stuffing, I have to keep asking your system, is this it? How about this? Uh, is this it? How uh, about this? And I might do it a thousand times a minute. I might uh, do it only 50 times a minute, depending on the rate that it's done. But what Dwayne's saying is, if you have that kind of monitoring it's like it's like watching people try all your doors and windows right. all day long and then being surprised when someone breaks in a, a month later and, and you can set up mm-hmm. alerts on your network for that kind of stuff can't you it depends oh, yeah. on where it is but yeah there, there's different ways to do that it's becoming more mainstream uh-huh. a company like chick-fil-a should have a SOC, a security operations center that's running state-of-the-art sim software which is um security information and event management the e didn't get into the acronym for some reason. No. Yeah, okay. No. Um, Nobody wants the E there. Silent. Well, it, it evolved it's, later. It used to be it's a, just, it's silent. just a sim, and then we just kept calling it that. But they should have this, and it's 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 actually malpractice to not. Yeah. I, I, I think yeah. we should okay. uh, link to this, uh, how supply chain attacks work and seven ways to mitigate them in pentesttools.com. Mm-hmm. What sure. do you think about that? That's, that's uh, some good advice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's great advice. And, and, you know, we constantly give to customers, um, you know, all of the different things they should ask their supply chain vendors. Uh, what do you, do you do a, do you like, uh, you should go to your supply chain vendors and ask them, do you have a pen test done? Do right. you have code review done? Right. And these are the types of things that I think supply chains are absolutely going to get, uh, especially once we get into the White House um, release, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. Uh-oh. 10% of the problem is people not getting the right recommendations and 90 percent is them not following those recommendations yeah <laughs> all right same old story mm-hmm. all right well your favorite country and mine china is back in the news but not necessarily the country just these chinese you hackers you don't know me at all <laughs> <laughs> and here i thought we were friends <laughs> america america's my america. favorite country america all right, Chinese hackers use new custom back door to evade detection. Yeah, this this one's awesome. Actually, Mustang I'm always looking. Panda. I'm always looking for custom back doors. Um, 
Yep, you I and Muddy so, Waters. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, the sun's children. gonna shine in my back door someday. So, I I would point out that the fact that they use this to avoid detection and there's a big newspaper article about it means they failed. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Did not succeed. Mustang Panda. What you got to slow your Mustang down? <laughs> All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. So, okay. Sudden outburst so, of music. A back door um, is a way for, uh, you know, an attacker, an advanced persistent threat or whatnot to be able to reach back into your organization and mm. do, you know, execute commands, exfiltrate data or right. whatever. Um, so it's not the initial breach point um that might be done over phishing or that might be done over somebody clicking on a site they shouldn't have or or you know might be done by somebody breaking in through a piece of software on a website and then deploying software internally right um but the back door is what allows them to come back um and and do nefarious things and it, and it's it's interesting because we as attackers are always looking for ways to break into organizations and then stay resonant and stay quiet yeah. so that they won't know we're there um, you know, I'll give you an example. One customer we broke into, um, all of our exfiltration of data. So, um, all the data we stole and all of the tools we needed to hack into the organization, um, we pushed through DNS, through name queries, right? Mm-hmm. And we talked about this before using DNS as a C2 structure. Um, so for command and control. Um, so we were able to take all of our tools in through DNS and exfil all of our data through DNS. And, and the customer wasn't looking for that, right? Huh. Uh, because who says, oh my gosh, there's more DNS queries today than there were yesterday. Right. Nobody does that. Right. Um, <laughs> in this particular case, uh, and I'll tell you, um, sometimes you don't even have to be really stealthy. Um, we've had customers where where you break into the organization and once you're in, Everything is allowed out, right? Wow. And it's the big thing we're finding on pen tests now. Like um, at one point, uh, just two weeks ago, we broke into a customer site and we we're like, how are we going to get the data out? And we're like, okay, why don't we just map a Windows drive back to my computer here at the office? And sure enough, we could do that. We just. That's crazy. Over the, over the internet, map the computer nuts. drive, right? And it's because who says, oh, I'm going to block SMB on the way out? Nobody does that, right? They just they say, should. oh, no, all ports should can be go out. Absolutely, you should default. never allow that. Yeah. Um, so in this particular case, they're using MQTT, um, which is a message queuing. Actually, this is a brilliant design. So <laughs> MQTT is a, it's a, a message queue. So you can put a message on the queue and mm. then and then subscribers can then take the message off the queue. Right. So I say, oh, can you, um, hey, Mr. Infected Computer or Computers, um, tell me who you're, tell me which accounts are on the computer. Yeah. And I put that on the queue and then all the infected computers that are subscribing to that channel get that message and right. they then look to see who's on the computer and then they put their own messages back on the queue and then yeah. I can connect to it. The neat thing about this is it is a sessionless, um, connection. It's not like the, the infected computer is directly talking to the C2 in the back end. They're just talking to this message queue. So is it like a UDP connection or something? It, yeah, you can, and you can configure it to be a bunch of different protocols. Uh, uh, but by default, yeah, it's a UDP connection. So harder to find. UDP, by the way, I uh, need to explain. Um, first of all, I'll tell you a joke about UDP, but you might not get it. Um, <laughs> UDP is a protocol <laughs> in the TCP IP family that we all use for internet access, but T, uh, 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 TCP socket, when you can make a connection, it's persistent. And then communication can happen both ways until one of those sides shuts down the connection. But UDP is connectionless. You just say, I want to send this data to this IP address. And on the other side, they're listening to, to, uh, data that comes in and they just process it. So UDP is like the mail. You throw the rep message in and, and hope it gets there. Yeah. And, TCP is like phone call certified, where you're connected. Well, certified mail too, maybe. Oh, a Can phone be. call. Yeah, of course, a phone call. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You're yeah. both on a connection until one of you hangs up. Right. Yeah. Great analogy. All right. Continue. Um. So this it's a it's what's interesting about this is MQTT was designed to be a highly resi- resilient messaging communication system that yes. can have multiple subscribers. So it's almost like MQTT was designed to be a C2 structure for communications for wow. 
you know, maybe it was whatnot. for hackers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it existed. It's existed long for a very, ago. very, very long, long time. Um, so when I, I but, thought the most brilliant way to do this kind of coordination was using a hotmail drafts inbox. Mm, yeah. Uh, they, You're going to give away they, all our secrets. Yeah. Well, you know, it's hard to implement. <laughs> Basically, there was a. Um, it's criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There yes. were actually there were actually spies, you know, who were try. I, I think they were. I can't remember who it was, um, but they were using a Hotmail uh, drafts folder, yeah. and they would go in and they would they would type out a message and they wouldn't send it. Sorry. Yep. Go in drafts, and then the other person would go and use that share the share that mailbox, and they'd go check out drafts. And they delete the message from there. Yeah. So, so it never got sent. Yeah. So we wow. use it a lot. We've used that same structure as a communications mechanism between infected boxes we've used, um, where we'll have an agent running on the computer we've infected and it will go to, go to Gmail, I'll log huh. into the G, our Gmail account and we'll go and look for an email with the subject of the name of the computer. And then it reads the body of the message and it knows what to do. And then it puts, it posts a reply. Wow. Um, So in your company, all you see is traffic going to Gmail (laughs) from your computer, which which you're like, oh, well, that's normal. Right. 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 So, um, yeah, we've, we've definitely used this structure as well. Patrick's giving away all of our secrets, but wow. But there you go. And now our listeners know too, (laughs) if they understood it. I feel like many of our listeners are just barely hanging on. <laughs> Stay in there. Sorry about that. Stay in there, in there, Grandma. <laughs> Grandma Franklin. Oh, well, you almost. Frank almost. <laughs> Grandma Franklin. She is Carl not listening to this show. She doesn't know what a podcast is. <laughs> All right. All right. What's next, guys? Uh, I think next is the the White House, actually. The White so, House. Uh, White House releases a new U.S. cybersecurity strategy. And we, we posted the link um, to whitehouse.gov's briefing on this. And, and they break okay. it up into some pretty simple points. Um, That's cool. But I think some of, the, some of the interesting things around this is the way that they're looking to switch up um, who's sort of responsible um, and, and it's like, hey, listen, small to medium businesses and individuals seem to be really, you know, everybody looks at, a, at an individual when they get hacked by an APT, like China right. comes after you. And yeah. then they go, oh, well, you had a crappy password, so it's your fault. Right. right. Or, oh, well, you didn't patch your computer, so it's your fault. And, and the White House is like, all right, well, that's not cool. Let's not do that anymore. Um, let's, let's take the people who are hyper capable in doing defense uh-huh. and let's get them engaged in doing defense. Um, so I think what we're seeing here is the White House is, is much more willing to collaborate with the private sector, um, and organizations who are really good at cyber defense, um, and organizations who are really good at cyber offense. Um, and start working more with the, the private sector to re-skate, re-sort of, um, shape that landscape. So this is a great idea. You want to mobilize all resources. But one of the things we have to be careful of is we're starting to get good at keeping phishing me- emails away from users. Oh, but mm-hmm. that just means that when one gets through, it's devastating. Oh, right. So we need to keep up the pressure of it's still everyone's responsibility to keep things safe and secure. Right. And recognize phishing for what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just one example. You, you need everyone to still be top of mind and we need to mobilize the networks, the operating systems, the, the lower levels to increase security. You know, I think of honeypots as a, as a great way to go. The uh. problem is if we identify a target until recently, we never did anything about it. We just mm. complained. A honeypot, by the way, is a, um, like you leave a pot of honey out on the porch for the bees to come in and then they get <laughs> it's a stuck. Fake target. And they for get stuck bear. in it and die, right? Because it's like a bunch of honey. <laughs> so yeah, that, it's that a, took it's, a morbid turn. Yeah. Sure. Wow. I'm sorry, <laughs> okay. Carl. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, so the idea is that so you're putting I can out, put a, out, <laughs> yeah, you're putting out a trap. You're laying a trap. Yeah. We, we occasionally will build a server, put it out on the internet. And leave something vulnerable and see if people can, you know, find that vulnerability to see uh-huh. how long it takes. It doesn't take long most of the time. Yeah. Um, I, and I, so, just, I remember talking to you years ago about one thing that you always do with your servers, and that is change the name of the administrator account to some, you know, arbitrary username, blob, yeah. whatever. 
and uh, and then create an, the 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 a, a real now administrator. Now giving away all the secres. Well, but know, but right? that's but yeah, I didn't I didn't. T- I it's mean, it's one. not Bob uh, on all your yeah, servers. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, it's Robert. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very formal. But then you have a you create a regular user account called administrator. So that's kind of yeah. like a honeypot, isn't it? Yeah, it is exactly yeah. because yeah. by doing that, they go after the administrator, and I give it like. It's got a 50 character password. It doesn't mm. have access to anything. It's right. heavily monitored and alerted. Right. And so if someone sees that account, they're going to try to get into it. Mm. Uh, the other strategy is to give it access to nothing, but give it a simple password that they're going to break. Oh, yeah. And then, then see what you but can do. But give it access to nothing and see what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or what I'd love to do, but I don't think we can, and my lawyers won't, won't allow it, <laughs> is, um, give it access to a directory. Of secret documents that will all cause ransomware on whoever opens. Them. Oh, <laughs> I, listen! I still think you can keep ransomware on your network if you wish, and then if they decide to <laughs> run it, it on their own, you guys are pure it's their evil. Fault. Evil. Uh, <laughs> what if Dwayne, Patrick? What if Dwayne was, was trying Dexter to hack evil? in? Was you know, Dexter evil? Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah he, was. he kind of was. <laughs> yeah. Um, what if, you know, what if a, 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 a white hat, is that what you are, Dwayne? What if a white yeah, hat developer, sure. we'll call it that. His, his hats hasn't been white in a yeah, long okay. time. <laughs> but you know, what if, a, if, a, if a hacker, uh, you know, a benevolent hacker t- like you guys are tries to go in and find something and you're, you get ransomware. If they, if they jump, if they read a document, they're no longer benign. They've, they've now gone. They've gone over the line. Come on. Dwayne has done that how many times? No, it's okay. I'll, I'll tell you, there are plenty of times. No, wait. There are plenty of times when we're- Dwayne does that before lunch every day. Yeah. So there are plenty <laughs> of times when, we're, when, we're, when we penetrate a customer that um, the first thing we do- Easy. Is we look, f- we Easy. look for- s- Don't say it. Signs of compromise. Uh, well, we look for signs of compromise, but we also, we look through all of the shares- yeah. That we can, we have access to, to find sensitive information in documents. Huh. Plenty of times we gain access to the entire network because somebody has a share that says, that has a password.txt yeah, in well, it. It okay. says, oh, Time here's out. the administrator password. That's, that's with permission. He's talking about without yes. permission. Without permission, we don't read anything. Oh, yeah, no. We don't do that. Oh, okay. All right. So company A no, says, I was saying, hey, with permission. hack us no, no, we're saying- and get in. But w- if what? you do that, you don't go and poke around then. That's what you're right. They let us Samaritan. know, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl's saying some Samaritan hacker notices a vulnerability, hacks oh. in, and, and opens a file. That's called hacking. It's not Samaritan. Yeah, no, you can't do that. You can't no. do that. You can't open a file on oh, someone else's okay. network okay. without permission. This is good. I'm learning the rules of benign hacking. Yeah. You basically <laughs> okay. can observe that the window is broken. Observe that you could probably get in through that crawl space and not. But if you go through the crawl space, you're now a hacker. You're no longer mm-hmm. right. You mm-hmm. no longer have the claim for. Uh, you can you can notice things right from yeah. the sidewalk, but once you cross the lawn and start, you know, you grab the the windowsill, you're 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 a criminal. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, you well, can't you can't go into the house, uh, take the TV, sell it on the on the dark web, and they'd be like, I was just proving that it could be done. So okay. there you have it. No, I got it. It doesn't work. Out I got so it. Okay. You got to sell it. You got to sell it. Yeah, at Best I Buy. mean, I knew you guys. If you're benign, that is the <laughs> <laughs> that is the nature of it. But I didn't know how far it went. All right, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll talk some more about this White House stuff. And we're back. You're listening to Security this week. I'm Carl Franklin. Those are the real brains of the operation. Patrick Hines and Dwayne Laflotte. And uh, we were talking about this uh, fact sheet. Biden Harris administration announces national cybersecurity strategy. Um, we didn't talk that much about it, but what else do we need to know about this? I mean, how does this, it affect this, us? This, well, this aside, this, this is a part of a uh, <clears throat> a change in a change in sea, a sea change, if you will. Uh-huh. The the this administration probably more than any other is trying to actually solve the problem. I, I, they're not going to solve the problem, but they're making um, headway. Um, the NSA is run by um, the same person who runs Cyber Command, yeah. and they're starting to talk about offensive operations. And okay. so it's it's this it's this full court press it's this you know changing tide and and as we said before Russia's already coming off their pedestal 
as the as the, the the expert hackers and China should be off their pedestal too because while they do a lot of operations and they're dangerous, uh. they get caught a lot, mm-hmm. an awful lot. And so we now know that the U.S. is actually doing offensive operations. Uh. But how often do we see? We we have seen articles about U.S. hacking, but they they're just not that many of them. And so huh. either we're doing a lot less of it than everyone else or we're just better at it than everyone else. Do you remember in the <laughs> early aughts when the NSA was called out for they got caught, you know, listening in on people's phone calls and getting phone numbers and stealing phone numbers and stuff? Yeah. And um, I went to interview one of our fellow regional directors, uh, Christian Weyer, in his yeah. hometown. Um, Germany. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, basically, his first statement was, NSA stands for no security anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Privacy is a big deal in other cultures. It's it's a oh, big yeah. deal in America, but we don't, we, we kind of give it lip service. Right. They give it real, like, bite and law over there. Mm-hmm. So wow. when I talk to my um, German friends, they're horrified by the things that are public yeah. in American yeah. society, like... The fact that if you get pulled over for drunk driving, it's part of the public record. Huh. That is not the case in Germany. Yeah. If you get convicted of murder in Germany and serve your prison time, your name is still not allowed to be published. Wow. wow. In the newspapers, there was actually a lawsuit about that. I thought that was ridiculous, but huh. they they consider privacy to be far more important than we really do as a society. Wow. That's sad. So where are we moving, guys? <laughs> I got a America. nice little island. I guess New Hampshire is as good as it gets, right? Heck yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, should we talk about this cybersecurity agency uh, raising an alarm over Royal Ransomware's deadly capabilities? Royal Ransomware. That sounds fun. Yeah, right. Um, so this this is uh, – Royal Ransomware is uh, – how do I put this? It's It's – Standard sort of ransomware. It's a little bit more expensive um, than normal ransomware. Their average payouts between one and eleven million dollars. They're usually wow. targeting higher end organizations, and I know, right? It's Very the Dr. upper Evil. shelf. Yeah, Top, <laughs> a million dollars. Um, so, cornerhardwarestore.com. Your ransom is one hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll just restore uh, from backup. Thank you very much. I gotta yeah. get a picture a lot. of Patrick nice putting his pinky to his mouth. Just no, never, <laughs> never we capture should. it. We should. <laughs> so the but the only the interesting thing about this is you know as companies as obviously like higher end companies that can afford those ransomwares typically have you know endpoint detection systems looking for ransomware. They typically have um, you know antivirus on. They typically have good email systems picking up viruses. Uh-huh. Right. So there's uh-huh. a lot of uh, layers to sort of peel apart there. Um, but what this this group of hackers has done, and and some of these actually are members of the defunct Conti group. Uh, uh-huh. What they've done is this <clears throat> this thing called callback phishing. Sounds like a comedy routine, right? Callback phishing is I send you an email and say, hey, um, thank you for your two and a half thousand dollar geek squad purchase. Right. Blah, blah, blah. If you didn't make this purchase and there's no bad links and everything refers back to, say, Best Buy. But at the bottom, it says, if you didn't make this purchase, please call this 800 number. And when you call the 800 number, the, the ransomware group actually has a call center answer that call. Wow. <clears throat> and they distract you on the phone the whole time. And they don't ask you for information. All they say is, oh, okay, well, you know, um, this is weird, you know, blah, blah, whatever. But they ultimately what they get you to do is click on something on the web that runs oh. on your computer and then disables antivirus and blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, so this is how they're targeting these organizations. Callback phishing is where you literally, it's a, it's a social engineering attack, but it's where you call back. You actually call the attackers and wow. talk to them while they hack into your computer. Um, Jeez. That that was really the point of this this article is just be careful if you have to call somebody um use use the number you find on Google not the number in the email yeah well mm, well the the number yeah. on their website yeah so, be careful with so Google too on yeah because for example I've seen it where somebody small business had a um problem with QuickBooks and they Googled mm. QuickBooks customer support and they got an a number to call an 866 number or something like that and they called it 
and they were talking to somebody who seemed very knowledgeable and they wanted them to do it. Huh. And it, they figured it out about halfway through that it was fishy just about, just before they were going to connect huh. and let them connect to their system. Huh. And they, they, they went and looked and found that it wasn't it was, it the was official website. It, yeah. it was, it was an ad. It basically somebody yeah. had done so, done engineering to get that higher up. Wow. Oof. In search engine optimization. So you need to go and make sure you're on the right site. And, and here's a, a hint. A real company will make it super hard for you to find that number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you find it right. too easy, it ain't the number. Sorry, brother. Yeah. Try getting support from Microsoft. I haven't yeah, found that good number luck. yet. Good luck, brother. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Ceasefire. Awesome. Targets down. I know, right? <laughs> 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 All right, one more, right? Cisco. Yep. This is uh, all yeah, right. Let's t- do it. So first of all, this is about uh, IP phones. Now these are desktop phones that use the network to uh, instead of the phone company, right? Right. Yeah. That right. I, nobody so, has anymore. I mean, old offices have them, I guess, but I certainly don't have any. We run it. Yeah, we run into these. A f- fair bit in large organizations so if it's a lot of them just like, it's like having a fax machine still yeah they still have yep. a fax, a fax machine, machine. Still, yeah i'll <laughs> just, just give you fax, the facts man. <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> um yeah. so th- so these are always interesting because a lot of people don't think of ip phones as iot um or right. tvs right carl yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> toasters apparently not toasters my refrigerator like oh, all of I, them are i IoT disconnected devices. my refrigerator from wi-fi that's ridiculous Right? I, I just, I, yeah. I, I, I ugh, makes me mad. And so I connected mine to my Wi-Fi, and here's why: because I want to break apart all the packets that it actually oh, sends. Okay. And so see you're if I can find it. a zero day for my. <laughs> you're for sniffing my your fridge packets, man. Uh, <laughs> I do that, but a kind of a different way. I'll buy you a fridge <laughs> to take apart. Dwayne, <laughs> Thank you. Have to do it to your own <laughs> um, so okay. So this one's interesting. So when we well, let's say we're um, you know customer pays us to pen test the organization red team you know engagement. Uh-huh. When we break in, there's a lot of different types of devices we'll find um, that we want to then exploit to either give us continued access to right. the organization or give us more information. Um, so what's interesting about phones um, is a a lot of people don't patch them. B, lots of times we run into there is a default username and password on that phone still. So we can just log in as the setup user with the password of oh setup. My God. And then we can do whatever we want. But if if the organization, let's say, did actually change the password on the default user, how many of them are going out and actually patching the firmware? Almost none of them. So in this particular case, this is Cisco IP phones, uh, 6800, 7800, and 8800 series. There is a firmware issue. Um, where an attacker can get uh, unauthenticated remote code execution. Um, huh. So you can run commands on the underlying operating system. Uh, and a lot of people may say, who cares, right? But I'll, I'll tell you these phones, not only could I put an implant on these phones that could beacon out to me and give me access to the network just like I can that TV. Uh, um, but there's also, sometimes there's some really juicy information on these phones. Like these phones will log into an SSO, uh, single sign-on uh, authority. So that oh, they right. can send, sometimes they can send email, right? When That's you get a crazy. phone call, it will send an email. Now I have access to the email Just system. stop. Just right? stop so with the there's features. there's all sorts of, ne- you know, <laughs> there's you don't all sorts need of that. Your fridge doesn't need to be on freaking no. Wi-Fi. A phone doesn't need to <laughs> well, send the, email. The worst part, God. the worst part is that the refrigerator has a TikTok account and it's got a million <laughs> views. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's the old cheese challenge oh my god <laughs> uh, yeah milkshake. that'd be funny my daughter will just send me a text one day and said dad you're out of eggs <laughs> go buy some and i wouldn't eat that yogurt if i were you yeah. uh, oh, okay so coming back to the advice if you're running one of these phones go patch there's a there's a new version that how does one even that. patch a phone i mean there isn't any user it's, interface on a phone is there honestly no there you 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 have to navigate the phone's menu through the touchpad 
Yeah. So you have to like down arrow with the two button oh, and then God. Up arrow with the eight button. And then, yeah, it's not easy to do, which is why nobody does it. That was hard enough to do with a printer, you know, to set it up so that yeah. every time you turn it on, it doesn't grab a new IP address and your computers mm-hmm. are like, oh, where's the printer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Awesome. Any so final words, uh, guys? Uh, uh I have. I regret that I have one life to give to my country, <laughs> Dwayne's. <laughs> Dwayne's. I have one life to give, and it's Dwayne's. Yeah. All right. See you guys next uh, week. Thanks. Thanks. Thank All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.